If you wanna see how I created this custom logo, then keep on watching. Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Megan. If you have not been here before, thank you so much for being here. I'm super excited to show you guys a behind the scenes video of how I create custom logo designs. So be sure to watch till the end so you can see exactly how I created this exact logo. And I'll walk you guys through the steps that I take when I'm initially starting the logo design. So let's jump right into it. The first step to starting an initial logo design concept is to review the questionnaire that my clients have filled out. So I have quite a few questions on here and my client took the time to answer all of these really carefully and really detailed, which I do appreciate so much. So I'm just kind of reviewing the questionnaire. Um, if the client were to have an existing logo, I typically would take this time to review that logo and understand what they don't like about it. And also, I've already done the mood board and the strategy, so I know exactly the direction I'm taking this logo design in. Actually, before I even show you how I start the logo, let's kind of run through the strategy so I can refresh my memory and so we can kind of walk through that together. Here is the strategy, which is the discovery and direction phase that I've created for my client. We did go back and forth quite a few times to make sure that she likes the overall direction, the colors, all of that. So we have come to a decision on the color palette. So these are all the colors I have created for her. I know I've gotten the question before, like, do you do revisions on the colors? Yes, I do. I allow three revisions for each phase of the process. So if they have revisions, I'm more than happy to make that. I know colors are a big part of a brand. So I really wanna make sure that they're happy with that part. So these are all the colors. Um, we decided to go with this color palette here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna basically copy this and I'm gonna hide the pages that we will not be needing to refer to just so I don't get confused and so that they don't get in the way. But I don't wanna delete them because I actually kinda wanna possibly reference those color palettes in the future for another project or another client if I really feel like it might work for someone else. So. I am going to update this color palette. I'll do that after, um, but now we know that this is the colors I'll be using. But the overall direction was how she liked it. So only thing different we will do is basically change um, some of these colors on the color and font examples. I wanna do that now because I don't wanna get confused later on with kind of the direction I'm taking it. And then also, Let's make sure that we have this pink correct and this red correct as well. So we have that over here. Oops. I'm actually going to remove those designs there. Perfect, we'll change this red just so we do not get confused with how everything is looking. Perfect, okay, so this is the overall direction we are going to go in. We're going to go with really bold and minimal fonts. So let me change that. Bold and serif fonts um, because that's what she sent me examples of and what she likes to look of. So fonts really similar to this, but also illustrations that look similar to this. So that's what I'm going to be paying attention to. I also can refer to my mood board here, which has the fonts kind of examples in here. And I also have already done a font search, so I know that I want to use this font called Editor's Note. Love this font, I think it'll work really well for her branding. So I'll definitely do a concept using that. So I really wanted to show you guys this part of the process because this saves me so much time, like making sure I have the strategy done and the direction I know that I'm going in saves me so much time and headache when I get to the concept part because now I know exactly what it is I'm gonna be creating. So. I am going to start the logo design process. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sketch on my handy little sketch pad here, and I will record what I'm sketching out just to kind of show you an example of like how I brainstorm this. But one of the biggest things to keep in mind with this client in particular is she wants it to be very minimal, not a whole lot of like, distractions on it. So I don't think we're going to be doing a whole lot of elements. I mainly want to sketch out different ways to make the letters of her logo kind of flow together. So let's go and head on over into my sketch pad.
All right, so now that I sketched out some ideas and I know where to begin, I am basically just playing around with the typography in Adobe Illustrator. So I like to find a lot of my demo like free fonts on Defont Free. I think it's defontfree.io, but also defont.com has a lot of fonts for you to kind of play around with. This just gives me an idea of like which font I actually want to use for her logo without having to go purchase a million license if I'm not even going to be using it. So I was searching for lots of fonts and just playing around with different like monogram ideas. She sent me quite a few inspiration pictures from like Pinterest and I on the discovery call and all the calls I've had with her, we've talked about what it is she's looking for. So I already have a good idea of like where to kind of take the brand. I know that she wants it really simple, kind of editorial style. One of her um, brand inspirations is, I think it's called Poosh, something like that by Gwyneth Paltrow, her brand and her logo is so simple. So I was really pulling inspiration from that and just making sure that I don't make it too busy looking. So you'll see me here just kind of playing around with different ways to like put a monogram in a, in a shape. Um, just to kind of have like some sub mark that she can use on her website footer or on Instagram, things like that. So that is what I'm working on. I had the idea of just doing like a simple B in an oval or like a square because her whole brand is bespoke living. And I was like, you know, that would be kind of fun to just have it so simple to the point where it's just a B, like even a B and just a period. I think it'd be so cool. But I'm just playing around with different ways to display this. So you'll see me pulling the B in here and just like having the L kind of cross through it. And then I did delete that left hand side of the B to see if maybe I could pull the L and have the L kind of run through it. So that creates the B shape. So I'm just kind of playing around with that. And guys, what's one of the things I could not recommend enough is to just get all your ideas out there have your illustrator like get messy with it just have everything on your illustrator then when it comes time to actually presenting it that's when you can clean everything up and figure out what it is that you do want to show and what it is that you want to trash so that's kind of what i have in mind when i'm doing this but i'm really like loving some of these fonts i found i think they're exactly what it is that i was picturing for her and i'm also kind of playing around with doing some differences in like italic sized font or italicized fonts and regular serif fonts and seeing that contrast of fonts i think is also really different and cool so playing around with that but like how fun is this font i'm loving this font and i i want to use it if not for her for another brand because i think it's a really a really nice one but i just outlined the text here and i am doing a kind of cut out of the l letter and just making that look seamless. So that is what I'm doing here. And you can either have the L cut through and do like an outline stroke, but I wanted to try it without the full length of the L going through the B. So yeah, I'm just playing around with different monograms. If you're wondering what I'm doing, that's what I'm doing. This is what I mean by outlining the stroke though with these two letters here is making it so that it looks like the B and the L are kind of cutting through each other and having those gaps between the letters so that it looks more finished, I guess is how I would explain it. Um, and you can either have the L cutting through or the B cutting through, depending on which one you prefer. But I think that came out pretty cool too. So we will see, like I said, I'm gonna get all my ideas out and we'll pick which ones we want to put in the presentation. And then after this day, I came back and I had some ideas of how to make like the P a part of the L. Um, so you'll see me outlining the text here and then just pulling part of the P, the bottom part of the P, dragging it down. You can do that by using the selection tool and I'm just pulling over the living word. And I feel like, like I said, I think that P can act as the L. So I think it's gonna look really cool, but that's kind of the ideas I had for this day. That's why I don't like to do VIP days for logos because every day I have like a different idea and I wouldn't wanna miss out on those ideas. So I always like to come back to my logos and make sure that I 
have everything out there that I want to show her. So now we're just kind of playing around with different ways to do that same kind of idea um, and doing capital letters and just playing around with this specific font because I think that this font is so easy to read. It's one of the things I always like to keep in mind is making sure that the font is scalable because if this client decided to get like a t-shirt or uh, business cards or something, I want it to be legible. I don't want it to be like you have to squint your eyes to even like see what the heck it says. So I always keep that in mind as well. Um, but I'm just going to let the video go. Watch, you guys can watch how I kind of put all these logos together. And then after I basically have all the logos out here on my Illustrator, that is when I decide to go into Canva. I, you guys, I know Canva is controversial. I don't always use it, but for my brand presentations, when I'm super busy, it's so easy to just plug in the concepts that I've created on Illustrator in the presentation. So I don't mind using it for like presentations and social media graphics. I just do not recommend it for logos and, you know, unique designs and stuff. But for presentations, I think it's totally fine to use whatever platform is easiest for you. So I find a lot of these images that I'm using right now, I find them on like Pinterest. So I, I know that they're not, they're like not my pictures, which is not what I would prefer in my dream world. I would be using pictures that the client has or that they used in their brand photos, but that's totally okay. I'm just pulling in pictures that fit within the branding that kind of match the mood board aesthetic. That way I can present the logos in that combination of styles. Um, you can, see, you'll probably see me jumping over to another client's presentation to just kind of copy over the format. I want to make, I need to make a template of this on Canva so I can just easily, you know, mimic the template for my other clients. But, um, yeah, I'm pulling in the primary, secondary, and submark logo. This is one of the logos I decided to go with for the presentation using that font that I absolutely love. Um, I think it's a really cool font. So pulling those in and we are going to make the submark just that really simple monogram with the B and the L. Um, and for each concept, I have a cover page with kind of the inspiration behind the logo and the description of the logo. So they kind of know like what my, where my brain was at with it all. So I'm just presenting all of this and the overall goal with this brand is to portray confidence. Confidence is like the number one value for her blog. So if you see the me pulling all these images in, the images are supposed to represent that. So that is something I was definitely keeping in mind. And sometimes the logo colors are hard to see on top of the picture. So I'll either change the opacity of the photo or add, you know, like a little bit of a hue to it so that it can be seen on top of the photo. And I do like to send some of these logos over in the brand colors so we can really get an idea of the full brand presence. So this is how I like to present everything. Okay, everyone, this is the logo designs that I decided to send over. We are on the second phase of my branding process. So after the discovery and direction phase, now we are diving into those logos. So you just saw me designing them. This is the mood board, just as a little refresher. We got the color palette and the colors and combination examples, the direction, the statement, and now we have the logo concepts. So I like to split them up by different concepts so they know like which one to refer to when they're giving me feedback. This is the first one. We have like a super modern, simple monogram here and kind of like a fun, like italicized font along with that serif font. And then the second logo concept, I personally like this one the best. It, I feel like the combination of like a script font with serif is just so beautiful. Um, so we have this one. And then we have concept three, which is also really beautiful, I think, but um, we have like a bold serif font. I wanted to do a more simple style font for this one because I know these are a little more 
a little more unique, a little more thin, whereas this one's super bold and easy to read. So I wanted to give her all those options. So I will wait to hear back from her. All right, you guys, I had so much fun designing this logo with you. It's so much more fun when I can do it with you guys and show you behind the scenes. It's not only motivating for me to go and design it myself, but also to show you guys the process. So I really hope that this was helpful to you, that you enjoyed watching how I create it and make it come to life. But I had so much fun with this and I wanted to let you guys know before you go that I do offer lots of brand design courses or website design courses. So if that's something you want to learn more about or see my actual process and get some freebies, then go check out those courses. I always leave them linked down below. I also offer a freebie that shows you brand design questions to ask. So if you're stuck and you're not quite sure like what to make your questionnaire about, go check out that freebie. I have it linked down below. But you guys, thank you so much for being here. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, as always, I'd appreciate it so much. If you gave it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel below, and I will see you in my next video.